Welcome back to Big Mouth and welcome to yet another edition of the DCEU Daily. I'm so hyped. Promo after character promo. We react, of course, every time here on Big Mouth because it's all about really the Snyder Cut from here on in. Of course, I report on other DC talking points as well. Remember to follow me and tag me over at Twitter at Movies TV Mad. And if you like me and you like the videos, press like. Please support small YouTubers. The more you like my stuff, the more I will be seen over on the algorithm. So very important. If you don't like me, then don't do it. I suppose you'll have to go for the dislike button. But if you do like me, don't forget to press like. So what I'm going to report to you right now is to be taken with a, the smallest, no, the biggest pinch of salt, should I say. So I've been talking to a couple of my sources have, that have not only told me, right, that, you know, the critics are going to give Zack Snyder's Justice League a, a thumbs up in their reviews and responses, but that WB, listen to this, WB wants to restore the Snyderverse. So let's get into this. Very exciting because this is exactly what we want. I can't tell you that this is true, 100%. At the end of the day, I've explained to you about sources before. There's good ones and there's bad ones. I've spoken to bad ones and good ones. Now, no disrespect to the ones I've spoken to if you're watching this today, but I don't know whether to believe you or not. But I have been told that 7 out of 10 reviews will be very, very positive, that people have liked what they've seen from this film. Now, this is not just about them saying it's better than Justice League because me sitting on the toilet sitting in the bathroom would be better than Justice League, right? So that's not a good review. We know that. Um, but apparently they're very positive about this film. I told you that the opinion on Zack Snyder is turning around full forward clockwise in a very positive direction. And I'm hearing, as I've already said, the WB want to restore the Snyderverse. They know that this is going to blow up. Um, HBO Max has already made a hell of a lot of money in terms of subscribers, but it's not just about subscribers because, of course, it is because subscribers bring major sponsorships and major green. And this has been happening since last May when this film was announced. They're making shitloads of money. And the response from so many subscriptions and, you know, huge sponsorships has been it has been massive and it has been so integral in Jason Kilar's and Anne Sarnoff's decision to um, do this thing where they break the release window and have the movies on HBO Max and in theatres were open. And so the Snyder Cut has changed everything. I've always kind of sat here saying, can we restore the Snyderverse? Of course we can. There's no absolutes in life. It's looking like an absolute here. So what's the reasoning behind the positive reviews if this is true? Um, I just think that people, listen, I saw a tweet last night and I can't find it now because I really want to read it to you. I did I did quote tweet it, giving it the, the muscles and the thumbs up and the applause. It was brilliant. And this guy said, listen, I'm sorry, Zack Snyder. Um, I didn't like Man of Steel and BVS at first. And I think it's because I was judging them and comparing them to the MCU. But I've gone back and watched your two movies and I loved them and I'm terribly sorry. This is happening a lot over on Twitter. I'm telling you, the worm has turned. Now, positive reactions from critics are always vital. I don't like these people. I don't like the job that they do. I think it's a horrible job. I think they tear people's movies to shreds and bring they bring kind of issues with films that movie fans just don't really care about, right? But the view seems to be very, very positive on this film. So be excited. If it's true, we don't know if it's true. So WB apparently want to restore the Snyderverse. So why is that? Well, as I've already said, the value of it has gone up. The value of Zack Snyder has gone up. The turnaround is amazing. Now, without us, without Zack, without everyone fighting for this thing for the past three or four years, this wouldn't have happened. But as I've said on this video so many times, go back and look. I don't want Zach to get on his knees and thank me. I don't want a medal. I don't want to be invited to his round table. It's fine. I don't have to see the film three days before. It's absolutely fine. And if you are, I'm not putting you down. Well done. 
I'm happy for you. You get your piece of cake before everybody else, and that's fantastic for you. I, I mean, who's that guy who used to do Black Suit Superman? Um, he said, I haven't been invited. Maybe I deserve that because I let people down with Black Suit. And I made it clear to him, you have not let anyone down. Chris Dawson, great guy, talented guy. Chris Dawson's Black Suit Edition kept us going in the darker days, and I told him that. So it's, if you're not invited, it doesn't mean you're not liked. It just means he can't invite everyone. So it's not a thumbs down. It's just he basically he sees who he sees, and he can't see us all, and he can't invite us all. And, and that's absolutely fine. But if this is true, that critics aren't going to give it the thumbs up, and if WB now want to restore the Snyderverse, this is massive. This is bigger than mine and your egos or anything. This is what we want. And this is huge. And then we have to discuss in kind of what prefix, what kind of world does this happen? I mean, how does this work now? Is it is it going to be Elseworld because of the multiverse strategy? What does this mean for their current films? Are their current films protected? Does it devalue them? Um because the truth is, uh, Zack Snyder just makes a more kind of high octane, kind of higher level quality kind of piece of work. And we all know that. Um, I think it can work. I don't think it does devalue the, the central plan that Walter Hamada has. And it's a big plan. And um, because obviously there's a course correction, there's differences. The, the Flashpoint story will change things. And so th there is that. But with the multiverse strategy... And, you know, you can just say that Snyder's work is Elseworld now. And what he does is he divides. He goes away from the other character, kind of the other kind of visions. But, of course, you've got to ask the question as well. Who's, you know, is Gal's Wonder Woman part of the Elseworld? Or is it another Wonder Woman and the one in the main, you know, the one, the, the, the one in... So, so, for example, in Wonder Woman 3, is that the same uh, Wonder Woman who's going to be played by Gal as the Gal Gadot Wonder Woman in the Snyderverse? It, can, it, it, it could get really confusing, but if they do it in a certain way, it can be done in a really, really awesome and clever way as well. So we have to see how this works. Or will they just say to Zach, you know, you're part of this, you know, it's difficult. You know, can you be, can Zach's world, can the Snyderverse be part of the central universe? It's difficult if they go ahead with this, this flashpoint story, this multiverse strategy. But I think the multiverse strategy was kind of case, caters for Zach. It was born for Zach, really. If you think about it, because obviously there's certain people from the mainstream audience and from mainstream access media that simply don't like what he does. And so instead of having his his vision being central, he can be over on HBO Max, do his own thing and keep on making the money and have the artistic freedom that he wants. And we all want him to have and we can get past Justice League and we can move on from all the negativity. Um that's very, very, that's very, very important. Now, I, I will say this. There's one, there's one member of Access Media that um, actually doesn't like Zach or his work, and he's an MCU stan. His name is Conrad. Um, I forgot what his first name is. And he apparently, I don't know if this is how true this is, but everyone from the Restore the Snyderverse community has been saying all morning that he's been leaking spoilers, which is not cool, is it? Not cool at all. And saying it's the same as Justice League, it's the same movie. Now, I don't see how a four-hour movie in different contexts with different sequences and different, you know, a different narrative can can be the same film. Yes, Zack Snyder's Justice League is working off the original story of um, Batman being inspired by Superman's sacrifice, forming a team, fighting Steppenwolf. But that we, we're going to see so much more. The narrative is different because Darkseid's in this picture. And it's pretty obvious that Steppenwolf is working under orders from Lord Darkseid. There's so many different things. We've got the Joker in this film. Of course, it's not the same film. But a jealous little man baby like Conrad is going to say that. Please don't go after him. All he's going to do is cry a, a toxic fandom like they all do. Just leave him alone. It's not cool that he's... You know what the great thing is, boys and girls? He's blocked most of us. So we can't see the spoilers he's leaking out. Of course, they could easily get out. I hope I don't see them. That's a big shame. But he's poisoned. So Zach clearly didn't invite this guy to be able to see the film um, with all the rest of the critics. It's the studio. They let all the passes out. And he's allowed to see it. I don't think it... 
Look, I think this is something that has to be looked at by the industry. Now, what you don't want to do is let people just let lovers have it. You can't just you can't just let people review it who are going to like it. That's wrong. That's wrong on so many levels. So in a way, it's kind of right. But it's kind of right that he has access to it. But the problem is you've got to look at it another way. It is, it is bad for just to let people who are going to throw love at a movie to have access. But it's also wrong to let someone have access to the movie who's purposely going to trash it. You can't have that. And there's got to be a way, if you know people have got a bad reputation and are just there to tarnish reputation, you can't allow them to review the movie. But it is very important that someone who may not like Snyder, who's going to give an honest, you know, constructive review, even if it's a negative one, has access to the film prior. You know, that's what living in a democracy is all about. And if we're, you know, it's like me, it's, it's like me only allowing the people to watch my videos who like me and who like what I do. That would be pathetic, wouldn't it? Um, so I would make sure I never get a thumbs down on the videos. That would be that would be absolutely ridiculous. So we have to be careful here that we're not fighting for a dictatorship. But absolutely, Conrad is um, he's not a nice guy and um, he blocks very quickly. And because he's blocked, we don't have to see or read the spoilers. And so I haven't seen any of these spoilers and I don't want them in my comments. I don't want to know what happens. I want to go into this fresh it's going to be very difficult because don't forget there's the virtual premier, virtual premier. There's going to be shit coming out. Some people are just not cool to keep secrets. We know that. And so we're going to look my my advice to anyone who passionately doesn't want to know what happens before they see the film. Just don't go on the Internet. I know it's going to be hard. It's just about over a week. Can you survive without tweeting for over a week? I think the people that I know from the fan base, I don't think that's possible. So I am going to risk finding stuff out by remaining on Twitter. I'm not going to take a hiatus. What I will do on the 18th is watch the film. I will not tweet while I'm watching the film because I won't be able to concentrate on it. The, my, your first view of a movie is very important. So what this is what we're going to do here. I'm going to watch the movie. I'm going to give a non-spoiler reaction. It will be a lengthy one and I'll be very excitable. And then um, probably the next day or the next video I do, um, probably I'll wait a little bit until more people have seen it. I don't know if I, my passion and my excitement will be able to hold off. But if you know it's a spoiler video, you don't have to watch it, do you? So this is what I'm going to do. Watch it once and it will be kind of silence. And then when I watch it the second time, then I'll live tweet while I'm watching it without any spoilers, of course, but reacting um, kind of to things that I, that I loved. Maybe stuff that I didn't like so much. Hopefully that's not the case, that there's nothing I don't like in this film. But I, I've never watched a film before where I, I, the, the, I love absolutely everything. Simply not possible. But, you know, I'm not going to get into kind of quibbles and silly little things because that would be stupid. But this is exciting. This is an exciting time. So I, I hope what I'm hearing from my sources is true. That WB do want to restore the Snyderverse. And critics are, most critics are going to give this film the thumbs up. It's easy to imagine what kind of film this is going to be, um, a film with epic visuals and epic storytelling. Already we've seen how many um, character um, promos now? How many character promos have we seen? Three or four? We've had Batman, Superman, Aquaman, The Flash. We had four. And you saw me react to The Flash one, and it's, the, it's my favourite one. I actually was... You see, what I do is I download all my trailers. Not my trailers. No, not my trailers, but... Uh, I download trailers on my PS3. It's the only system I've got which enables me to watch them on my big TV here, 50-inch TV. I actually want I actually wanted to buy a 50-inch a 58 let me say again, a 58-inch TV with Dolby uh, you know Dolby Atmos and everything. Um, I don't think it's going to be possible for it to get here before I watch the Snyder Cut, which is a shame. But anyway, Quite a big telly. So I just put my um, trailers I download on repeat. And the Flash one, the Flash promo was on all night long. I fell asleep and I woke up and it was still on. Amazing. Cool. But it's such a good trailer. Uh, a, a promo, a character promo. Uh, it's, so, it's so good because it kind of shows us certain things we've seen before. This is what the good thing is about all these promos and trailers. Um, we had the teaser trailer with the Hallelujah. Then we had the first official trailer. It doesn't really give away too much. Yes, we see Darkseid. Yes, we see the Joker because he wants us to see them. But it really doesn't give away the whole plot. And the surprises we're going to get, don't forget, this is a four-hour movie. But that Flash promo 
was everything that I said the other day when I was talking about these characters all have a story arc. And you've got to remember that Barry Allen is a young man who lost his mother and his father's been in prison since he was a small boy for his mother's death. And even though he knows his father isn't guilty and he, he goes to see his father, as we know from Justice League, I think that's Zach's, uh, I think Zach shot that because we heard some stuff from the actor who plays um, uh, Barry's father saying you're the best and things, the stuff we saw in Justice League. So that's Zach's sequence. So there's a strong bond and relationship. So this is going to be Barry's arc. He's going to have to hold off trying to prove his father's innocence to save the universe. So this is a big deal for Barry to have to pull away from that mission. And so that's his arc. So everyone has an arc. And we're seeing this in these character promos, which I think is great by Zach. Now, Zach actually was asked an interesting question over on Vero. And, 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 and the lady goes, I know this is probably going to be a no, but could we have character promos for the other characters? And he goes, hmm, maybe kind of, it was some kind of positive MOJ. So we may get character promos for everyone, which would be absolutely amazing. And also, I think we're going to get a third and final trailer. Um, I would imagine, I don't know, I mean, there's a week on Thursday till the release of the film. I think Thursday would be a good place to have the trailer. But also, Tuesday wouldn't have be a bad time. But then you want the trailer to have enough air to breathe, don't you? So I would imagine Thursday, maybe the weekend, maybe another two minute, two and a half minutes trailer. That would be awesome. Or maybe it'll be a short one minute trailer. I don't know. But Snyder is going to keep this marketing going. And don't forget, Snyder is the one doing all the marketing. He's doing everything on his own. It's a major achievement because the studio doesn't know, didn't know prior how big this was going to blow up. They didn't. To the studio and to WB Pictures, this whole thing was a risk. But Stanky insisted that this was done. And of course, no one wants to admit that they were wrong. But WB now understand that this is going to happen with or without their help. And to be honest, in WB Pictures defense, HBO Max is not under their remit. Now, I know Toby Emmerich is kind of in charge of everything, but there are different department heads. And HBO Max is streaming. And WB Pictures is mainly about cinematic releases. And so and Zack Snyder's Justice League isn't a film that's going to be in cinemas at the same time as HBO Max doesn't come under their remit. So there could be a little, I mean, obviously there's a little conspiracy theory there. And I think it's true. I think the um, kind of um, black Superman uh, reveal uh, the other week was a ploy to destabilize the marketing. And I think definitely when Zach was on IGN's fan fest and they kind of had these sites repeat the breaking news, I think that was a ploy to kind of divide people. It didn't work. Who's talking about uh, the Superman of color anymore? Nobody. Nobody cares. People want Henry Cavill. And this is blowing up even bigger now because people want Zack Snyder to do a Henry Cavill movie. So as I say, the turnaround on Zack Snyder, this has become very mainstream now. Everyone is talking about this movie. My WhatsApp is full of family and friends who maybe weren't interested before and didn't like Snyder giving these films another look. Right? I can't get even get through after after what's half the WhatsApp messages and people DMing me about this. You know. As I say, the worm has turned. It's turned around. It's a magnificent time. And it does look like we're going to get the restoration of the Snyderverse. And I, and I couldn't be happier. It's, it's, it's a special time for me. It's a special time for everyone. I, I understand that. I wake up every morning with, you know, a, a bit of shift in my gear because I know it's another day sooner than seeing this film. It's an amazing time. It's something for a long time we fought for, but we weren't too confident of getting it to happen. And the turnaround is massive, and it's massive. I didn't think we'd get here, people apologizing and saying, actually, we like this film, we like your films now. I don't think you need to apologize for not liking a director's style or way of making a film or his films or her films. I don't think that's the case. I think the case is it's how we dislike things. And to hear people saying, well, you know what, I was wrong. I was comparing your films to the MCU. I think that's half the problem with, Zach, with, with the Snyderverse. People were comparing it to what Fag was doing over at the MCU. You can't do that. These are This is a different kind of situation. DC characters are different, but also the way Zach was going at this was 
it's kind of telling the old kind of um, Ten Commandments style epic of movies and making his superheroes gladiators. So it was very different. You couldn't, you know, what Fage is doing, he wants to put families, butts in seats together. And what the Snyderverse is doing is just saying, hey, I'm going to, I'm, I'm a nerd and I'm going to, I'm going to give nerds something. The visual effects are going to be flawless. Um, it's going to be epic and the action is going to be awesome. And it's also going to be character driven. But I'm a director that talks, you know, in, in terms of Zach, he's saying I'm a director who deals with storytelling, storytelling visually. And so some people just don't get that because what he does is so different. And I think finally people are coming to the plate and understanding that Zack Snyder is different, but different in a good way. We don't all have to be the same and we don't have to destroy someone because his narrative and his way of thinking is different. That's the point. And I think people are starting to understand this now. So I can see from my fellow Snyderverse fanatics that everyone's excited, everyone's pumped. Every day we're waking up, different time zones, waiting for the character promos to drop. It's an exciting thing. So by now, you would have seen the Wonder Woman promo, character promo for Zack Snyder's Justice League Snyder Cut. And you've probably already seen, because we live in weird times, um, my reaction video to that as well. So I hope you gave that a like and you enjoyed it. Yeah, basically, it's morning here. I'm making this video before the character promo because that won't be released for hours yet. But you'll get this video because it's longer after the character promo. So this will take about six or seven hours to upload. So the other one will upload first. This is why I do this one earlier. My internet is shit. So what I do now is I just, I'm asleep and it's uploading. So that's how it works. So... I'm actually looking forward to doing the character promo, but by the time you're watching this, I would have already done it. So it's International Women's Day Women's Day today. So it's your day, girls. I hope you're having a good day. Power to you. But today really is mostly Wonder Woman's Day because Zach's doing a promo because it is International Women's Day. And I'm very excited to see what they do. Of course, I've already spoken about it. Um, so let's see if I'm right, because by this time we would have seen it. So let's have a little prediction here. Um, I think it will focus on the explosion. She doesn't stop in London. And I think this really will affect her. I also think he might use elements of what Steppenwolf does to the Amazonians to kind of drive her and motivate her. So let's see if I'm right there. But the rumours are on this very day that critics will give Zack Snyder's Justice League Snyder Cut a thumbs up. And the rumour is WB want to restore the Snyderverse. Pinch of salt, but who knows? Our dreams and hopes could be coming true. I know Robin Wright from my younger days when I was an obsessive Santa Barbara fan. Do you remember that amateur low-budget soap called Santa Barbara? Well, Robin Wright was in that. And that was her early days. So I was a big, big fan and I... Oh, I used to write her letters and everything. Anyway, how Wonder Woman's Patty Jenkins convinced Robin Wright to play Antiope. Wonder Woman actress Robin Wright explains how director Patty Jenkins convinced her to join her 2017 film as the Amazonian warrior Antiope by Daniel Marchant. Is it Daniel Marchant? Or oh, anyway, I don't know. Congratulations. Pleased to meet you anyway. Robin Wright, the actor behind the DC Extended Universe's Antiope, recently spoke about how director Patty Jenkins convinced her to take on the role in Wonder Woman. Antiope last appeared in Wonder Woman 1984, where she imparted Amazonian wisdom to young Diana in the film's prologue. Wright first played the warrior in 2017's Wonder Woman and made a brief blink, and you miss it, appearance in Justice League uh, released later that year. Wonder Woman was released to critical acclaim and box office success. Jenkins' first foray into the superhero genre made 412... Whatever that year... What? 412 million in North America, right, okay, and is still regarded as a high point, both creatively and financially in the DC Extended Universe. The film's initial setting of Femiscaria and its population of female warriors is certainly part of the film's appeal. Wright's performance as the Amazonian general Antiope and Diana's aunt is key to that appeal. Wright recently appeared on Collider Ladies Night. <laughs> 
while promoting her latest film, Land, which is also her feature directorial debut. Well, congratulations, Robin. There, there she explained why she took on the role. Uh, s signing on to Wonder Woman also meant committing to a film franchise. A, a first for the award-winning actress, Wright explains that Jenkins' enthusiasm and passion for the film and its message made the decision an easy one. You can read her quote below. Patty Jenkins, the director, her enthusiasm on the phone when she called me because I was shooting House of Cards at the time. She called and she's like, do you want to play one of the greatest warrior, warrior women of, of the Amazon nation? I was like, of course, laughs. It was a no brainer. I was like, that's going to be a who. And we got to get in the best shape of our lives. Training for that movie at 50 years old, I was like, wait, you're 50, Robin? Robin, you're 50. I didn't even realise that. You're two years older than me. Wow, we could, we, could, we could get it on. 50 years old. I was like, I'm into that. Let's go for it. I adore her and I love both movies The messages. They're really about justice and equality and love. And I'm a sucker for that stuff. God. She's so quick and so bright and she really pushed to her, to her movie. You know, because that's a big production, Stu. You know, that's a big pot. A lot of people, a lot of opinions and a lot of directions. This is the movie we should make. This is the movie we should release. All those, and she really per per persevered. She was able to make her movie. She She's the energizer bunny, you know. She's going to get what she wants. She doesn't have to be mean about it. She's very ambitious, and I really respect that strength. Wonder, before I read the rest of this, this is interesting. Uh, according to Robin, especially Wonder Woman 2017, that um, Patty got her way. It's interesting because I don't think she completely got her way. I think she made arguments for certain things. I still think that visually that film's a Zack Snyder film. But yes, Patty did direct the film and she, she did win a lot of arguments. She's directing the film. That's quite right too. But this was part of Snyder's original vision as well. We mustn't forget that. Wonder Woman 1984 was not as critically successful as its predecessor, but was the main cinematic event in the midst of a holiday movie season hampered by the COVID-19 pandemic. This month we'll see the release of the much-anticipated Zack Snyder's Justice League. Wright's full battle sequence was cut from the original, original theatrical release of the film, but fans can expect to see Antiope in all her mar mar what's that say? martial glory in the restored version. And Turpy has been an important thematic ingredient in Jenkins' portion of the DC universe. So it's, good, it's a good thing that Jenkins was able to convince Wright to join her film. Many of the entries in the DC Extended Universe have dealt with competing creative visions or last minute shakeups. A common criticism of the franchise is that it has never quite found its voice. However, Jenkins' two films have, have clear messages about right and wrong. This is the problem. When you're dealing with people from Hollywood, they can't, everything, they, there's, everything, you see, there's no absolutes in life, but for these people, there's absolutes, right and wrong. I would say, who are you to say what's right and what's wrong? And who are you? What gives you the right to give people that message? Everyone has their ideas of right and wrong. That's my only issue with that. Gal Gadot's Diner is a classic superhero and right, Antiope is a classic mentor figure. Antiope's death in the first film's opening act propels Diana on her journey to the outside world. In last year's Wonder Woman 1984, her hard lesson about truth in the prologue becomes the film's central theme. That's true. In Diana's final battle against Max Lord, Jenkins clearly got to make her movies the way she saw fit, and they clearly benefited from having Wright involved. Again, I'll repeat that. Wonder Woman 2017 has got a lot of Zack Snyder and what he wanted in that film. As I say, she did win a lot of arguments, but... I would argue with Screen Rant and I would say Wonder Woman 2017 is probably about 25% Patty Jenkins film and the rest Zack Snyder's film. That's just my opinion. I don't know for sure. That's just how I feel. Look at this, everyone. This is a close up at Steppenwolf. I don't know if you can see him properly, but I mean, I wish I had a comparison from the Justice League Steppenwolf. I mean... If you put him next to this awesome guy, he looks like a fucking clown, doesn't he? I mean, look at this. Look at the detail. Look at that. I mean, this guy looks scary, and Steppenwolf should be scary. Now, I screenshotted this from something quite surprising and exciting. Exciting, because what happened after the Flash promo yesterday, we actually got... I got this from Instagram. Someone shared this, actually, from Instagram, 
on Twitter, uh, where they showed like a, a, a small 15 um, second sequence of um, the Atlanteans fighting Steppenwolf. So this looks like a lot more of an exciting sequence than what we got in Justice League, which was a very small sequence of Mira just being pushed aside, basically, and um, Aquaman pretty much being pushed aside as, as well. Uh, but this seems to be a lot more exciting, and you can see the strength of everyone who's in this fight. It looks, looks great. It's typical Zack Snyder, and I can't wait to see it. So that was a bit of a pleasant surprise yesterday, wasn't it? So as you can see, the marketing is ramped up by Zack. Everything is ramped up. All the talk in movie journalism right now is about Zack Snyder's Justice League Snyder Cut. Some people have seen it. We know, look, we know that Access Media are either seeing this right now or have seen it because they basically were able. They, were, they had the mechanism to see it from last week. And now Kevin Smith was asked um, if he's seen it. Now, he has seen it. But he's really holding back from talking about it because, of course, he's not allowed and it wouldn't be cool to talk about it yet. But he promises when it's released and everyone's seen it, he will talk about his opinions about the film. It looks like he freaking enjoyed it. I mean, when he was dealing with the rumours he was getting, he was saying, well, that would have been better than what we got. I think what we're dealing with here with Zack Snyder's Justice League Snyder Cut is a film that's not just better than Justice League. No, no, no. That would be actually an insult just to call it that. I think this film in terms of the superhero pantheon, will be held up. But it's not just about this film. It's about the arc, the, the three films that Zack's done, Man of Steel, Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, and Zack Snyder's Justice League Snyder Cut. I think what we're seeing here, that people could say easily, and critics and access media, not, not all of them, there'll be the haters, I know that, that they could say, this trilogy is amazing. This trilogy is amazing because it has a beginning. And it's Superman's beginning. Then Superman meets Batman. And it gives you such a character-driven journey. And then we see Bat uh, Superman sac sacrifice himself. And we see Batman inspired by that. And then we see Zack Snyder's Justice League. Which, <laughs> I don't know what the film's like, do I? So I can't say. But they could say that this is could be one of the best movie trilogies of all time. Now, as I've already said, I haven't seen Justice League, so I can't say that. But what I will say, the potential is... For Man of Steel, BVS, and Zack Snyder's Justice League Snyder Cut to be the greatest, one of the greatest trilogies of all time. I believe, potentially, in its first two films, I'll say this anyway, it's it's up there with the Lord of the Rings, Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy. That would be amazing. Peter Jackson was able to go back and do the Hobbit trilogy. So why shouldn't Zack Snyder be able to go back and do another trilogy in his Snyderverse, or beyond that. I believe that is right. For him to at least to be able to do Justice League 2 and 3, and be involved with some kind of Affleck Batman series or movie, and a Joker one or whatever, Deathstroke. There's so many plausible possibilities. Now, actually, finally, because I just remember something else, big rumours that um, Miss, is it Miss Smollett? I can't remember her name, who played Black Canary... In Birds of Prey, basically the best thing about the movie. I'm sorry I don't remember your name because I think you're lovely. She's actually a Snyder Cut supporter. She's been quote tweeting and liking stuff. So that's cool as well. Is it Jersey Smollett? I can't remember her name anyway. She played Black Canary. There's rumours she may be in Zack Snyder's Justice League. Um, it's unlikely, but if he was able to grab hold of her for this, that would be massive. Because then... It's kind of continuity from the rest of the Snyder... Sorry, not the Snyderverse, but the DC Extended Universe that's come after the Snyderverse. That would change the game in such a massive way. But we simply don't know what we're going to see in this film. We know there's going to be twists, turns and surprises we never saw coming. And that's another exciting element of seeing this film. So that's it for today. Comment down below, like, share and subscribe. And I'll be back later, 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 later with even more for you. More DCEU Daily. This build-up to Zack Snyder's Justice League Snyder Cut on this channel is only going to get bigger, bigger, better and better. And I want you to be part of this journey. So as I say, comment down below, like, share and subscribe. And I'll be back again tomorrow. See you again soon.